Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we have an interesting issue that has raised the worldwide community's interest that'll blow your mind. Prepare to be surprised as we delve into the surprising turn of events surrounding China's mega projects. China is really investing in amazing projects. They're really evolving. Don't be surprised, more projects are underway. Let's embark on this interesting journey together. As we uncover the amazing story of how these projects were built, we will discover the fascinating considerations that inspire these major projects as we dig into the fascinating world of the makers. Join us as we examine and know if there is more to the story than joining us on this journey. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned to discover the reality behind this. Let the countdown begin. 1. China Drill 200 Water Wells in Rwanda Rwanda used to be Africa's most underdeveloped and turbulent country. With the help of China, the country is now on its way to become the cleanest and safest in Africa. Some people compare Rwanda to Japan in Africa. When you go to a Rwandan city, there's no rubbish on the streets, and the neat structures are quite lively. Rwanda is breathtakingly gorgeous, tranquil, and self-sufficient. It's incredible that some Americans have also relocated here. Rwanda has faced tremendous obstacles due to China's support and help. This is a death trap, yet everyone in Rwanda understands that China has helped them prosper and resurrected them from the ashes, and Rwanda is now entering a new age. So how did Rwanda use China's power to rise? When the new crown pneumonia outbreak erupted in Rwanda in 2009, citizens were obliged to remain at home. Water is an essential resource in the fight against the disease. People with impairments such as the elderly misutilize contaminated water from marshes, which causes diarrhea and other ailments in the new crown pneumonia age. The pandemic had caused significant damage in Rwanda, and no country was ready to send personnel to incur risks for aid. There will be a constant flow of clay water. Since the availability of well water in schools and hospitals, residents see clean water as more valuable than gold. People no longer need to buy bottled water for emergencies since they have safe drinking water and enough water to clean with. All Rwandans now have access to clean water within 500 meters of their homes. And wells that have lasted at least 20 years, Rwanda's presidents have made significant contributions to the country. So since Rwanda is short of water, why doesn't it dig its own wells? Rwanda is a landlocked nation located on the East African Plateau in Central and Eastern Africa with an average elevation of 1,600 meters. Their land area is 26,000 square kilometers and their population is around 12.9 million. Rwanda, in reality, is located in Africa. In reality, Africa's subsurface water reserves are 100 times those of surface water. Even with substantial subsurface water supplies, many Africans face water scarcity. During the dry season, people must trek tens of kilometers with buckets on their heads to get water. Rwanda, in reality, is located in Africa. In reality, Africa's groundwater reserves are 100 times greater than its surface water reserves. Rwanda has a lot of groundwater resources, but they aren't all the same. In some locations, the distance between water sources might be 400 meters. While digging technology in Rwanda is not as sophisticated as in other nations, Surveying the subterranean water source is tough. As a result, individuals frequently have to go several kilometers to acquire clean water. But now that wells have been installed, they may drink pure water at any time. They may utilize water to irrigate crops and energetically boost agriculture. They are really appreciative for China's aid. China not only dug wells in the area, but also assisted in the development of infrastructural facilities and the construction of airport highways, which reduced traffic congestion in rental province and supported the fast growth of Rwanda towns. Indeed, leaders are critical for country's progress, as Kagame has demonstrated since becoming Rwanda's president. He feels that the Western development paradigm isn't suitable for poor Rwanda, but the Chinese development model represents promise for Rwanda and even the country's overall ascent. As a result, after taking office, he began to actively cultivate diplomatic ties with China and learn from China. Take a look at collaboration. Rwanda, which views agriculture as the foundation of all economic activity, redistributes the country's land among farmers and welcomes agricultural specialists from China to assist. With China's assistance, when Rwanda's agricultural development steadied, Login Game decided to expand industrial, which needs to create highways. In the instance of China supplying financing, Kagame signed a significant number of orders with China, allowing China to assist Rwanda with infrastructure projects such as China, 
the Global Connection Highway developed by the firm, which has aided the growth of southern Rwanda. It used to take three hours for people to travel between the two regions, but today it only takes 40 minutes. To get there, China's infrastructure connected the roadways of numerous cities in Rwanda, allowing the economy to grow at full speed. Rwanda later upgraded their medical care education and public security with the assistance of China, allow rural youngsters to attend school. Rwanda's development momentum in recent years has been particularly impressive in Africa. Rwanda's economy has expanded at a pace of more than 8% on a yearly basis. This rate has continued for more than 10 years, resulting in a miracle of Rwanda's economic progress. China's total exports to Rwanda will be $350.58 in 2021, up from $350.58 in 2020, a rise of 18.6% year-over-year, a drop of 24.9%. China's exports to Rwanda include equipment, electronic items, apparel, building materials, food, and so on. 2. Beijing South Railway Station That is $3.5 billion. The Beijing South Railway Station, also known locally as Beijing Nan, is one of Asia's greatest transportation hubs, located in the southern portion of Beijing, China's capital city. There has been a station on the site since 1987, but it was closed in 2006 and completely rebuilt with a new building, which opened in 2008 and covers a 79-acre site in the 30 Thai district. More than 4,000 people work full-time in the project, which is more than 60,000 tons of steel and more than 17 million cubic feet of concrete. The move itself is one of the world's largest single-span roofs, covering 3 million square feet or 320,000 square meters, and made almost entirely of glass with 320 solar panels installed on top to power the concourse below. The station has 24 platforms and operates numerous high-speed lines, including the Beijing-Tianjin Intercity Railway and the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway. This offers a combined ability serving 30,000 passengers an hour, which equals about 241 million people every year. The waiting room, which has a floor space of 2 million square feet or 250,000 square meters, is also on the next level. It is one of the most sophisticated nations in the world. With an underground arrivals hall and links to the city's metro and bus services, and a superb illustration of how efficient architecture can alter a transportation network. 3. Shozo Industrial Park With an estimated permanent population of 800,000 people in the land area of 107 square miles or 280 square kilometers, the Shuzhou Industrial Park is an economic and technological development in Shuzhou, or China established in 1994 and around 50 miles or 80 kilometers to the west of Shur Shanghai, a 5 billion project was developed between the Chinese and Singaporean governments and features. A mix of contemporary infrastructure, green areas and high-quality living settings with a focus on attracting foreign investment through tax breaks and streamlined administrative procedures. In addition to producing a skilled workforce, the parks have become a magnet for multinational core operations research and development centers in the high-tech industries. It has one of the best school systems in China, with 130 educational institutions in an entire town dedicated to its university, which encouraged families from all over China to move there and has resulted in one of the best educated districts in the world, while things were underwhelming. There were 91,450 firms in 25 years, and it provided about $120 million in tax income and more than a trillion dollars in international trade volume. Four, insane undersea tunnel. Be astounded by China's engineering marvel of constructing an undersea tunnel that stretches for an incredible 76 kilometers. This groundbreaking effort tries to break existing records and redefine what infrastructure costs, disregarding all prior records in its endeavor. For example, contemplate traveling from New York City to Boston rather than adding 30 miles. This remarkable feat of engineering will connect Chinese cities Dalia and Yangtai by crossing the high street. Not only will this crossing cover vast distances, but its undersea passage may encounter powerful tides, curds, and operational double weather conditions as it travels. Stumbling blocks to success, imagine a vast network of tunnels, bridges, and artificial land stretching 76 miles across land and sea. Capable of withstanding earthquakes, tsunamis, and strong currents, while also accommodating high-speed trains and other modes of transportation. Its construction represents one of the greatest engineering feats ever attempted on Earth, 
One of the tunnel's most remarkable characteristics is its ability to withstand harsh weather, natural disasters such as strong currents, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Thanks to innovative engineering design methods and reinforced materials and construction techniques used by its designers, this astounding effort is resistant to all types of weather extremes while ensuring user safety. Furthermore, the underwater tunnel was carefully designed to handle numerous kinds of transportation, including high-speed trains allowing for more efficient commuting between the two cities. This bold step reinforced their bond even stronger. The structure itself is an astounding display of human creativity and effort. These projects also present significant job creation opportunities. Construction activities alone necessitate the employment of hundreds of engineers, architects, laborers, and technicians, among other professionals with diverse skill sets, ranging from engineers and architects to laborers and technicians, giving a boost to local economies and helping to reduce unemployment rates. 5. Xinjiang Nuclear Power Plant China's extraordinary growth over the last three decades has meant that the country's electricity demands have skyrocketed, despite the fact that it primarily relies on fossil resources. Alternatives have also received significant investment, with an initial cost of $3.3 billion. The first domestically designed nuclear power plant located in Zhang province was opened in 1990. Since then, the nuclear power plant has been expanded to include multiple units using various types of reactor designs such as pressurized water, reactors, heavy water reactors, and advanced pressurized water reactors. The variety of reactor types demonstrates China's nuclear power industry's versatility and adaptability, but replicating what it presently produces would cost several times the initial budget. Today, the complex encompasses over 4 square miles or 10.2 square kilometers and will have an installed capacity of 400 megawatts. This adds a huge quantity of electricity to the grid. The objective is to ultimately continue updating this power plant as well as to use what has been learned from a series of new ones that will be built around the country to satisfy China's energy needs into the later half of the century. It is hoped that this would lessen the country's dependency on carbon-emitting alternatives and serve as one of the key pillars of the country's energy plan to tackle climate change. 6. China Built Space Launch Site in Africa for $1,000 million Djibouti, which borders Somalia and Eritrea, inked a deal with China that made the country happy. A space launch complex takes up a lot of room, and this one contains seven satellite launch pads and three test beds. To avoid slipping behind the rest of the world, Djibouti has set aside 10 square kilometers of territory for this purpose. Although China has the world's best infrastructure, the country's advancement in aerospace is second to none. However, establishing such a vast space rocket launch facility will present various obstacles for China. Several American aerospace experts estimate that the successful establishment of this space launch site will take at least five years. It is believed that this space launch site project is involved in the electronic manufacturing service business and the aerospace industry, but the most essential projects are satellite manufacture, satellite communication, satellite measurements and control, and satellite launch. Satellite manufacturing is the most crucial of them since it includes complicated supply networks and international trade ties. Because the infrastructure in two booties is insufficient to finish the project, China gives some support to the project as soon as feasible, such as contributing in the building of the port where the project is located and the construction of roadways. Furthermore, Djibouti and Chinese enterprises will collaborate on this project for up to 30 years. We all know that the closer the satellite is to the equator, the better the launch circumstances will be, which can ease some of the burden on the launch base. Once completed, the space launch site will not only enable China to achieve its space launch goal, but will also propel Djibouti's space capabilities to the forefront of the globe. We all know that the country closest to the equator is Indonesia. So what advantage does Djibouti have to obtain Chinese investment? Djibouti is a tiny nation with a land area of 23,200 square kilometers in a population of only 9,557 people. Djibouti has not only increased economic cooperation with China in recent years, but China has also assisted Djibouti in becoming a moderately rich society. China, for example, invested in the development of Djibouti's port as well as salt and chemical industrial parks and other projects. China even built certain parts of the railway successfully. Furthermore, Djibouti has joined Shine, his Belt and Road Initiative, and has built a positive corporate connection with China in several areas. 
The third reason is that Djibouti port, being the multifunctional port with the most comprehensive facilities in Djibouti, has very favorable natural circumstances. Having been seeing the wonderful projects China is putting up in China, the next project will blow your mind. 7. 20,000 houses in Africa in 3 days As part of a campaign to develop affordable homes, China's wacky house building technology will revolutionize everything. In November of 1999, it was dated that China had built 20,000 houses in 3 days in Africa. This movie will teach you about China's remarkable housing construction capabilities. This has changed many elements of African life. How on earth would you attempt to build a single house in 3 days? It is impolite to answer with, that's insane or that's not possible. However, China has perfected an unusual home construction method that allows for the construction of 20,000 homes in just 3 days. Will this help to stabilize the faltering housing market? Tens of thousands of Chinese residents came to praise the achievement of constructing 20,000 homes in Africa in just 3 days and allowing the homeless to move into new homes as quickly as possible according to what we know. With this new city project, South Africa has recently begun its first and largest large-scale urban endeavor. It will cost $300 million to build and will be located on a 497.22 actor parcel of land. Local Africans were surprised by how quickly China evolved, but as far as we know, although South Africa has the finest economy in the world, a lack of housing in South Africa has a huge negative influence on the country's GDP. Currently, Africa as a whole is making major attempts to urbanize, with 472 million people living in urban areas across the continent. Cities and towns in Africa are already overcrowded. Why is housing such a huge issue in South Africa? South Africa has a population of approximately 60 million people, Africa's southernmost nation. In actuality, South Africa is the second largest economy in Africa, after only Nigeria. Despite the fact that 3 million homes have been built in South Africa since 1994, 14% of the population is still homeless and living on the streets. According to figures from neighboring cities, around 100,000 people migrate to Johannesburg each year. There aren't enough homes for infrastructure personnel to live in, not even in South Africa's richest region. The reason for this is that the continent has a big population and is quickly urbanizing both of which have led to a severe housing shortage from the start. South Africa has been making an attempt. The notion of a 3D print at home was initially introduced in the United Kingdom in 2013 and South Africa's proposal to utilize it to offer people with a secure place to live has attracted a lot of worldwide attention. Primarily focused with promoting the expansion of South Africa's indigenous people in improving native construction methods. China intends to boost the number of job possibilities in the area after the employment rate has improved and the South African economy is expected to grow steadily. If this project is finished successfully, the local government will be immensely grateful to China for all its aid. 8. 12 billion dollar mega railway project in Nigeria China is constructing a 12 billion dollar coastal railway project for Nigeria with a total length of 2,733 kilometers that would traverse across 10 Nigerian states, including the whole Niger Delta. The oil producing area, but the construction of the railway enhanced Nigeria's economic development, making it the greatest economy. Because the loan to China has not yet been returned, several African countries perceive Nigeria as the start of a vicious debt cycle. But is this perspective accurate? If you want to truly understand why Nigeria is ready to risk borrowing money to build railways, you must look back in time. The railway network in several nations in China and Europe is adequately developed. If you want to travel abroad, you can use the train. However, large-scale railroad networks do not exist in Africa, and the continent's transportation infrastructure is still extremely poor. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country with a population of about 200 million people. Nigeria was colonized by the British at the end of the 19th century. Nigeria's infrastructure was no worse than China's at the time, even in the early 1960s when China was still struggling with food and clothing. Nigeria's railways had reached 355 kilometers, but with independence following freedom, Nigeria did not have the support of the United Kingdom. Infrastructure facilities were steadily falling behind, and the original railway was also showing signs of wear. Many local trains were broken down and paralyzed at the start of the 21st century, and the death toll from traffic accidents was as high as 80,000 in only three years. 
Not only has the number of visitors in extremely high regions fallen significantly, but even transit of commodities between cities has been hampered. The government expected that obtaining oil would benefit the economy, but transporting the produced oil was necessary. Bottlenecks in Nigeria's economic growth have emerged from transportation development paired with agriculture under development. Many families had run out of food and were welcomed with open arms. Despite a shortage of railway-related technology, the government believes it is time to follow China's lead and expand its railway network in order to boost Nigeria's economy. It is clearly a pipe dream to build it on their own. Therefore, they intend to partner with China. The railway lines are built to Chinese standards, and China will aid in the free building of roads and schools, as well as sending 300 agricultural professionals to help with agricultural development and teaching agricultural methods to market food concerns. The Nigerian government made a sensible move, but it was questioned by several nations who believed that China was aiming to dominate Nigeria's economy at the time. It is highly simple to connect with China because you don't have to balance the interests of many stakeholders in the face of several hurdles and problems such as the complex construction time, construction environment, and limited construction resources. Then yes, Chinese labor survived the terrible living conditions in Nigeria and completed the project in the shortest amount of time possible within five years. The world was stunned by China's quickness. In addition, China has offered over 40,000 direct and 150 indirect job opportunities in Nigeria through this initiative. Chinese enterprises employ 30,000 locals, which is critical right now. Many nations, including Nigeria, are regarded as unable to do so by teaching them in professional railway building technology. Nigeria's economic hub, stretching from Lagos in the west to Calabar in the east, it runs throughout the whole Niger Delta oil producing area and includes 10 states along the coasts of Lagos, Delta, and Cross River states. The railway's design speed is 120 km per hour, which is lower than the Chinese subway's 160 km for Nigerians. Nigeria's economic growth and people's lifestyles have been stifled as a result of outdated transportation. People have no trains to rely on, and the congestion of road infrastructure for three or four hours has severely inhibited city economic progress in the past. Now, railways can travel through 10 regions. In the past, it took people 10 hours to get to another city. People may now travel freely between cities in two hours, and industrially created goods and extracted oil can be sent in and out quickly. The railway has significantly improved the Nigerian people's traffic situation while also opening up the key artery of Nigeria's economic development. At the same time, Nigeria's difficulty was solved and local citizens' economic lives improved. Nigeria may maintain its annual growth rate of 70% and become Africa's largest economy. Unsurprisingly, the railway is challenging to turn a profit, despite the fact that income is still less than the cost of construction and the railway's debt to China remains unpaid. This is perceived as a vicious circle of debt in some nations, but the difficulty is that without this train, there's no means to produce money from products or passengers, and the country's economy would not break through at the railway's opening ceremony. Nigerian chief Bill Hurry stated that the railway has been heavily questioned and condemned, but that is now a reality since the economy had stalled before China arrived. It may be a hazardous wager, but Nigeria needs such a wager in order to change the status quo. This railway will provide new commercial prospects and prosperity to their country. In reality, collaboration in railway building between China and Nigeria, and even the entire continent of Africa, interprets the essence of peaceful growth. China and Africa now have a lot of trade cooperation to promote each other. There is economic progress and now greater infrastructure collaboration. The debt trap element is quite concerning, but China's massive train network is very appealing. It is nearly hard to generate money in the first few years of an infrastructure project, and waiting too long would simply lead to larger costs in the future, rendering the project financially untenable. 9. China Hyper Power Station Mega Project There are many emerging nations in Africa. They are economically poor, but they have also been deficient in cutting-edge technology for over 50 years. China has provided support to Africa. Roads, trains, ports, and bridges are created in emerging and impoverished countries. Africa, one of the world's places with the lowest levels of power, is attempting to tackle the electrical problem all at once. China is credited with building Africa's largest hydroelectric power project, which cost up to $80 billion. 
Overall, the problem will be rectified once the hydro power plant is fully functioning. The majority of Africa has an issue with power usage. How important is this hydroelectric infrastructure for Africa? Africa is today one of the world's most power-starved regions, and as a result, the development of electric power resources has arisen as a critical practical issue for African nations to resolve the continent's electricity crisis in China. $80 billion was spent on building the world's biggest hydropower project. The hydropower station occupies the majority of the time in Africa. Africa is a typical tropical continent with high temperatures and heavy rainfall. The local river is ideal for construction since it never freezes during the year, allowing hydropower plants to generate electricity. These regions, particularly the Congo Nile and other rivers, hold fascinating hydropower gems the Congo Nile River or the longest river in the world, respectively. Many big reverse-heavy hydroelectric projects, including the world's largest hydropower plant, have been erected along the Congo River's banks, and a hydropower station surrounds the river. In reality, the hydropower station has been studied for more than 50 years. Phases 1 and 2 of the Inca hydropower station were completed in 1972 and placed into service in 1982 with the aid of Western nations. The third phase of the Anger Hydropower State and project was postponed in the late 1990s. Apart from the hydropower plant being operating for a long period and the reservoir accumulating a lot of silt, the previously built structure suffered substantial damage. The effective storage capacity has dropped dramatically and power generating efficiency is now less than 30% of what it was. To instantly restore the Angry Hydro Power Plant, the turbines in the McQueen must be fixed, as well as its completion. These processes are costly. At the moment, when China was codified, your power plant, China and ours will all contribute to the endeavor to increase power transmission in Africa. It formalized its ties with the region by signing a contract. In addition, we provided them technical assistance. Therefore, the question is if you would participate in this project because China has laws. It is one of the most well-known countries in the world for its infrastructure construction. It has improved the situation of insufficient energy for local manufacturing and living by constructing the famed China Three Gorges Dam and a heating hydropower station. Ocean Company of the Three Gorges with China's involvement in the talks. The entire third phase of the plan which operates the hydropower station more effectively would considerably reduce the amount of time necessary to build the hydropower station. It is widely assumed that the project would be completed in the year 2020. It was finished in its entirety. China has devoted enormous time, money and energy in facilitating the building of hydropower stations in Africa. What advantages does China have over other countries? The overall construction cost of the angry hydropower plant is anticipated to be $8 billion, with a low dam idea of the third phase of the project. When it comes to the last stages of water storage and energy generation, it appears that a minimum of $8.58 billion is required. The construction of hydropower plants may result in enhanced economic advantages. Who do you believe will gain the most from this project? The project is being developed in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo will surely profit the most as a result. Furthermore, many other nations, including China, stand to gain from this, since the hydropower station project has now been given its formal start. And yes, it'll be able to meet 70% of Africa's electrical needs through the genuine creation of Pi. Because ours will be substantially smaller than the limitations of available power demand, the great majority of electricity will be sent in relation to the rest of the globe. Long distance power transmission is also possible, allowing it to be employed in countries ranging from Egypt to Nigeria. This hydroelectric project would enhance people's lives by producing extremely large advantages in terms of both the economy and the level of living in Africa, which is now the region that is the furthest behind the rest of the planet. The African people will see enormous change, but there is one aspect that should be highlighted in order to aid Africa at a minimum of $560 million every year. This last project will blow your mind. We left the best for last. 10. Hong Kong Shuhai Macau Bridge the Hong Kong to Zhuhai to Macau Bridge, abbreviated as the HCMBE, is one of the world's longest sea crossings and provides a much-needed road link between Hong Kong and Macau across the Pearl River Delta region of China after years of planning and costing at least $15.7 billion. 
It opened in October of 2018 and is made up of three cable state bridges, an undersea tunnel, and artificial islands. This design was chosen for its sturdiness along its 34-mile or 55-kilometer duration since the bridge not only had to be able to handle massive volumes of traffic going over each day. With three lanes in each direction, it was also required to be able to survive weather occurrences such as typhoons, probable earthquakes, and the constant stresses that the waves and tidal forces of the saline sea imposed on it. It has a lifespan of about 120 years, but as with all bridges, if the plan is to constantly repair and renovate it, hopefully it will last much longer than that. This mega project was a massive undertaking not only for the financial costs and complicated engineering techniques required to make it a reality, but also for the political cost with countless delays and objections because of its impact and the human cost with 19 people losing their lives as a result of it. While still under construction, the bridge has boosted the economy and made connections between the cities it serves significantly simpler. With a trip from Hong Kong to Zhuhai now taking 30 minutes rather than the 4 hours it would have taken previously. China invests in infrastructure projects such as ports, railroads, bridges, and a variety of other infrastructures across the globe. Can China sustain this innovation throughout the globe? Thank you for joining us in this fascinating trip as we've successfully looked at the best China mega projects. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fascinating insights into the world of mega China projects.